What's going on YouTube? My name is Trey Kepsel and this is Elk Motorsports. I talked a little bit about the specific type of welding machine that I started with welding on the Suzuki Samurai and that was a Hobart Handler 140. And one of the biggest contributing factors to why I chose that machine was because it only required a 115 volt outlet. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to wire up your own 220 volt outlet. And the reason why is because Elk Motorsports has a new addition to the shop. And that is the Miller Division 180. So some general information about this welder in particular is that it comes with the ability to run a 115 volt plug or a 220 volt plug, which is really nice. But with this particular machine, I want to make use of the maximum duty cycle and be able to weld the maximum thickness. So I'm going to show you guys how to wire up a 220 volt plug. Now, Something that's really neat inside the service manual is it actually gives you all the information that you need for this particular welder. It tells you, you know, that uh, max recommended standard fuse or circuit breaker rating in amps for normal operating is 30 amps. For your 230, which is your 220 volt plug, your maximum allowable cord length and the conductor size, your wire size. I'm wiring this up for the eventuality of being able to use a big welding machine, which would require a 50 amp breaker. So instead of going and doing the wire side for only 30 amps, I'm gonna go ahead and just wire it up for that 50 amps. A few things that you're gonna need to do this is you're gonna need wire. I'm using THHN number 8 wire, which is rated up to 55 amps. You're going to need a 220 volt plug. This one is an exterior mount because I'm going to run conduit and I'm not going to run the wires in the wall. So this will mount on the outside of my condo will connect to the top. I have a 30 amp dual pole breaker which allows me to put two hot wires in. And then conduit wise, I've got two 90s. I've got 20 foot of straight run. I have a junction box that makes a 90. It'll go straight in and go into the wall and I have an access port for directing the wires and feeding the wires. I have some conduit stays and I have an adapter that will screw into the top of my plug that'll allow my conduit to connect to it. So to be able to run this dual pole breaker, you're gonna need a minimum of two available breaker spots. I've actually already gone ahead and pulled the panel off of my breaker box. And I made mention in a video before that I had actually wired up my own tankless hot water heater. So I actually already made an access port above the circuit breaker that is just a piece of wood that I cut that screws on the studs and it has a cutaway for the exact same type of access port 90 degree conduit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another opening into it so I can mount this in so I can run my conduit and bring my wire into the breaker box. So let's get to it.
So this is the first part of the wiring. I'm gonna wire this receptacle before I wire in the breaker box. So your two outside connections, your two flat blade terminals, those both have to be hot. And then this top piece is your round ground. So that's how you have to wire it up. Just put your hot on the outside. And put your other hot on the outside. And then put your ground in the middle. And now I got those wired up, so now I can put the cover on. Just to let y'all know, I've cut the power off at the pole. So, just to give y'all a rundown of how this works, right here on the left side of my particular breaker box, you can see all these white wires. That is the neutral block. You do not plug the ground cable into the neutral spot. Over here, you'll see two green wires with a whole bunch of bare wires. This is the ground block. These two green wires are a part of my tankless water heater that I wired up. And down here in this empty breaker spot is where my two pole 30 amp breaker is going to go. So, I'm gonna take these wires. Back up in here, I've knocked a cutout out for the wires to go through. So I'm gonna fish them through here and then down through here along the back side of all this wire. save this wire because I have another receptacle down right here, right underneath this breaker box that I'm gonna wire up to. So I kinda have one at mid point of the shop and one at the very front. I got this green wire in the ground block, I'm just gonna tighten it down. And now, I wanna take my breaker and I'm going to put it in. And now, I can appropriately run my wires the correct length. So on this one, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. <clears throat> I already put a hole in the sheetrock and the knockouts right here, so it'll just fit straight up into there. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna fish it through. If I can grab him. <laughs> so if you wanted to add a receptacle the easiest way, this would be the way to do it. You have your breaker box, and you take a knot, one of these punch outs at the bottom, and then you put a hole right here along the stud, so that way you can mount your 220 volt plug onto the stud. This way you don't have to run any conduit, you can get the, the least amount of wire, like three feet of wire in a receptacle and your breaker, and you'd be pretty much done. So. Unlike the other one that I ran through the top, there's a cutout at the back and there is this little adapter piece that lets you clamp down the wires so that way it secures them to the body and then you can wire it into the plug. So that's how we're gonna do this one. You take your wires that are fed through the wall and 
and then just feed them through this little clamp on the back side of this plug. And just like with the other one, your two blades, your two outsides are your hots. And the top one is your ground. So my wiring is two reds for hot and a green for ground, just because that's easy. You can make them whatever color you'd like, but that's what I chose to do. So you just put one of your hots on the outside. Push the piece down so it clicks. Run your screw down. And take your other hot. Put it on your other outside piece. And flip this around until it clicks in. And run your screw in, nice and tight. And now I'm gonna put my ground in between the two hots coming from the back. Just put it in your top connection slot. And then run it down. I like to give myself a little bit of slack in here in case you ever have to come in here and do some maintenance or something you can just kind of push them forward like that and then back here on the back you have these two flat flat head screws and you can just run them down and now your receptacle is ready to mount on the wall. And now we're ready to wire up the second plug. So now I've got all the wires cut to length and they're ready to go in the two pole breaker. Now it's okay to wire both of these receptacles like this into this breaker, just if you only have a breaker for enough amperage to run the welding machine, just you just can't use the receptacles at the same time. Like let's say you're running this 30 amp breaker and you want to use a air compressor that takes a 220 volt and it can run 20, 30 amps and then your welding machine only runs 30 amps. You can't run that air compressor or that welding machine at the same time. You have to use one or the other. Or you could bump the amperage of the breaker up and then you could run both of those two things at the same time. So let's just wire this in and put the power back on and throw the breaker and see if it works. Well guys, the shop's got 220 volt power now. I can start laying down some beads with that TIG welder. Hopefully I can bring out some more fabrication. If this was a video that you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit like, it really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so that way you can stay up to date on what I've got going on in the shop. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.